Coming up on this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. We have some encouraging news on how U.S. beef exports have fared so far in 2019. Plus, see how the Natural Resources Conservation Service helps cattle producers achieve their land stewardship goals. And now, NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Hello and welcome to NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Auctioner. We begin with an update on U.S. beef exports, which remain relatively close to last year's record-setting numbers. According to data released by USDA and compiled by the U.S. Meat Export Federation, the volume of beef exports increased 1% year-over-year in July, while the value of those exports reached over $720 million for the month, down just slightly from a year ago. From January to July, U.S. beef exports were down 2% from a year ago in volume, while export value for the year to date was $4.75 billion, just slightly below last year's record-setting pace. For the year through July, exports accounted for more than 14% of U.S. beef production, delivering a value of just over $311 per head. NCBA staff in Washington, D.C. work every day on a number of policy issues that could impact the beef industry. We got an update on what's happening in our nation's capital in this week's Beltway Beef Spotlight. The Real Meat Act is, is just really simple. It, it will codify uh, the definition of beef for, for labeling purposes. And this is really an issue of, uh, of uh, transparency, of safety. I think that American families have a right to know uh, what is in the food that they're eating, what ingredients are in the food that they're eating. Uh, we've heard from many people back home and across the country that this is important legislation. And whether you're a beef lover or whether you're a vegan, I think you have the right to know what ingredients are in the food that you're eating. So uh, we're glad that we uh, have introduced this bill. We're glad it's bipartisan, uh, and we hope to push it forward uh, and get something done for, for, uh, for consumers across America. Joining us now is Congressman Roger Marshall from the great state of Kansas. Congressman, thank you for your time. Hey, glad to be here. I understand you're introducing a very important piece of legislation called the Real Meat Act of 2019. What is it and why is it important? Well, I think we're trying to, number one, is just define what real meat is and what real meat isn't. And I, I got so many complaints from folks back home. They walk into their grocery store, and then here's this fake meat in there with the other real beef from Kansas. So it's very irritating. And, and we think that consumers today, more than ever, want transparency. They want to know what they're eating, where it's from, all those, those issues like that. And it has to cut both ways. Uh, so here's a new product that's being introduced. It's very unregulated. We don't know if it's safe or not. And I think that consumers deserve to know what, what actually is. And the, and the labeling is just a little bit of a, of a misnomer. Yeah, absolutely. Especially when you put the two products next to each other. I think beef clearly, clearly has an advantage, but that's, you know, our opinion. As long as it's from Kansas, it does. Kansas. <laughs> it does. Yeah, I think the only argument up here is which is a better tasting beef, Nebraska beef or Kansas beef. I think we all agree that uh, fake meat, artificial meat, whatever you want to call it, has never been studied. You know, as a physician, uh, I have no idea what to tell people about it. Is it going to help your kids grow strong and healthy like we're used to seeing our kids grow up? Or is there going to be missing some protein complex that we haven't yet identified? So it's a little scary to me. You know, and even today, uh, as I'm talking to people who supervise and oversee our food industry, the safety of it, and I ask them, who, who is monitoring this fake meat? And the answer I got was very disturbing. Nobody is. So this legislation is going to help describe exactly who's responsible for monit monitoring the situation. We're used to having the safest, most reliable food in the world. And I think that this, uh, this fake meat, so to speak, is threatening that. Yeah. Uh, you, I mean, there's a lot of important topics to cover on that bill, for sure. It sounds very important. Uh, what are you hearing up here on the issue of fake meat on Capitol Hill? What's been the discussion? Well, I, I think it kind of goes along with uh, 
with, with almond juice, you know, so the people that grow, that, that have cattle and, make, and milk the dairies, they're very frustrated with that. So one of my stories I love to tell is to walk into some place that's selling coffee. Now, I refuse to spend $4 for a cup of coffee, but my wife will bend my arm and make me buy her a cup of expensive coffee. But my favorite thing to do is say, I want a, a medium latte with almond juice. And I'll see a big scurry back behind the counters, and, the, and they talk to each other, they come back and say, we don't have any almond juice. And I'll say, well, it's right there. Oh, they said, yeah, it's almond milk. No, it's almond juice. So, uh, so again, I, I think the, the frustration is just a lack of transparency and honesty. Uh, beef, a, a very important product for Kansas and for, for Texas and Oklahoma, Nebraska, Iowa, all these states, a uh, very important industry, and we want to protect it. Yeah, uh, beef producers definitely don't want to fall into the same category um, as, as the dairy industry with almond milk and, and that type of thing. So my question then is, what can beef producers across the country do to help support this legislation? Yeah, I think they can reach out to their own legislator and ask them to, to contact Dr. Marshall's office about supporting our legislation to properly regulate fake meat. Dr. Marshall, thank you so much for your uh, support of this bill and for recognizing the importance of the topic. We appreciate it. I'm proud to carry the load on this one. Thank you so Thanks. very much. If you'd like to stay up to date on all the key issues and events from DC, one way is by becoming a member of NCBA. Members get the Beltway Beef Newsletter. It's a weekly update straight from Washington that gives valuable insights on the key policy initiatives that may impact your business. To join, just call 866-233-3872 or visit the website ncba.org. Still ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we'll tell you everything you need to know to register for the upcoming Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA trade show. Stay with us, we'll be right back. At Case IH, we believe it's our job to provide you with solutions. That's why our Farmall and Maxim tractors, as well as our tools and attachments, are designed with you in mind. From mowing to baling to loading and more, we're here to help turn your to-dos into to-dones. At Case IH, we'll keep your days running smoothly with equipment that's durable, versatile, and highly efficient. No wonder farmers are more loyal to Case IH than any other brand. Visit your local dealer or go to caseih.com forward slash livestock for more. What does it mean to be an American cattleman? It means you have what it takes where it counts, on the inside. At Ritchie, we understand that. It's what's on the inside that defines us. We share the same values, ingenuity, commitment, sense of pride. These are the values that built this country. They're the values that built this company. Ritchie, proud to be a partner to the American cattleman since 1921. The 2020 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show will be deep in the heart of Texas, San Antonio. It's the cattle industry's biggest convention with education, networking, and fun. Plus, you can check out the huge NCBA Trade Show, outstanding entertainment, and much more. So make your plans and be there for the 2020 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show, February 5th through the 7th. Details at ncba.org. Each year, a huge crowd turns out for the Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show. It's a unique and fun environment for cattle industry members to come together to network, create policy for the industry, and to have a little fun. And joining us now is Kristen Torres, NCBA's Executive Director of Meetings and Events. Kristen, thanks so much for coming today. Yeah, thanks for having me. You and your team are really busy right now getting ready for this uh, little event in early 2020. Tell us a little bit about the planning process. This time of year, it's all about the details. <laughs> the big stuff's planned and in place, but now we're deciding how many gallons of coffee we need to order, <laughs> where we need to order electrical, where we need to put some tables and chairs. It's all about the nitty gritty right now, putting in some long hours. You know, we've been to San Antonio several times now, and, and why do you choose San Antonio as, as one of the popular destinations in our rotation? Sure, San Antonio's um, in our rotation because it's easy to get to. It's close proximity to a lot of producers. It's warm, the beautiful river walk, and they have a great setup for conventions. And actually for folks that have been to the convention before, the experience is gonna be completely different this time because they have an entirely new convention center there, mm -hmm. in addition to some brand new hotels. 
And let's not forget the good Mexican food. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's great, too. Uh, what can you tell us about some of the speakers and sessions at the 2020 convention? Yeah, we have a great lineup planned for this year. Cattlemen's College has over 20 breakout sessions. Mm -hmm. They're going to do some um, live cattle handling sessions as well during Cattlemen's College. Um, we'll hear from Captain Scott Kelly mm -hmm. in our opening general session and a gentleman by the name of Kevin Brown's going to close out the convention for us, and he's going to talk about being a hero in the hero effect. Wow, that is encouraging. You know, uh, I always enjoy the entertainment. I mean, the fact of the matter is, it really is fun. It's just a fun way to get away from things. It's not all about business. Tell us a little bit about the entertainment you guys have scheduled in San sure. Antonio. We try to make the convention fun for everyone as well. You know, a lot of people do treat this as their vacation, mm -hmm. so we want to make sure that we have a good time. Uh, we're going to do a Sunset Music Festival at a historic train station in downtown San Antonio, wow. um, and then the convention will close out with a professional bull riding event, which is going to be exclusive for NCBA um, members and all the attendees for the convention. And let's not forget the trade show. It's always such a popular event. You know, I've had people tell me it's the Super Bowl of agricultural trade shows. What do we have in store this year for the big trade show? Yeah, absolutely. So again, I mentioned there's a brand new convention center, so the layout's completely different. We have eight acres of exhibits this year. So Bring you're going to see walk and juice. absolutely. You're going to see all different kinds of companies, everything you need for your operation. Um, there's all kinds of new education on the trade show floor as well. So we have a uh, shoots and scales showdown, which um, people are going to be able to compare side-by-side -side shoots and scale systems. Wow. Um, we have a demonstration arena where we'll do cattle handling sessions right there on the show floor. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to do a drone drive where people are going to actually get to see drone demonstrations mm -hmm. inside the building. Oh, that's great. And then we also have another new um, education program that are called Table Talks. Those are round table discussions hmm. that'll happen right there on the show floor People get to um, get up and close and personal with speakers hmm. and other producers to talk about issues, problems. Um, it's going to be great. It's, well, it's a, be a lot yeah. of new content this year. That's great. And, and what do people tell you uh, about coming to convention? I'm sure you get lots of feedback from folks. What is the value uh, that they find in coming to the convention? Probably the most invaluable part of coming to the convention is connecting with other producers from across the country. Mm -hmm. This is, as you mentioned, the Super Bowl of our industry. It's an opportunity for people to meet other folks that are experiencing the same problems and issues that they have. It's a chance to have your voice heard mm -hmm. in the industry. It's a chance to find out what's happening in the industry and find all the latest products and services in that trade show. Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned before, have a whole lot of fun too. Absolutely. You know, this is NCBA's Cattlemen and Cattlemen, but people don't have to be a member to attend. Is that right? That's correct. You do not have to be a member. You do need to be um, in the cattle industry, mm -hmm. but you do not have to be um, a member of NCBA or um, any of the other organizations, we welcome everyone, mm -hmm. but I highly recommend you stop by the NCBA booth and learn all about those member benefits. And how do they register? What they need to do is go to our website, which is convention.ncba.org, and you can register. We made it nice and easy. It's all one-stop shop right there. We will see you deep in the heart of Texas. Absolutely. Thanks, Kristen. Thank you. Kristen mentioned many excellent reasons to attend the Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show, and it's not too late for you to make plans to attend yourself. It doesn't matter if you're a first-timer or a long-time convention attendee. We want to see you in San Antonio. You can find out all the details and get registered at the website ncba.org. Still to come on Cattlemen to Cattlemen, see how the Natural Resources Conservation Service is helping an Oregon rancher achieve his stewardship goal when we return. When the field is your office, you never get tired of going to work. Cut, break, bail, repeat. New Holland offers the power and versatility to get through the day. From small squares to large squares and everything in between, New Holland has you covered. Visit your local dealer today to find out more.
Are you ready to go deep in the heart of Texas for the 2020 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show? It's the cattle industry's biggest convention back in San Antonio, a place filled with incredible sights, history, food, and fun. And you can't afford to miss the huge NCBA trade show. The trade show is un unbelievable. There's, I think it's the biggest one I've ever been to, and it seems like it just gets bigger and better every year. There's no better place for cattlemen and women to learn, have fun, and connect with fellow producers from across the country. Cattle industry convention is one of those can't miss, right? If you haven't gone or haven't attended, you see so many old friends, and, and it really is. It's, it's a combination of business and social. Amazing speakers, unbeatable education, all for cattle producers. So plan now to go deep in the heart of Texas for the 2020 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show. Visit ncba.org for more. For many people, raising cattle isn't just a job, it's about continuing a legacy that was started many generations ago. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Matt Fleck takes us to Oregon to see how the experts at the Natural Resources Conservation Service are helping one ranch manage and improve its land and water. The Collins family has lived in this part of Oregon since 1873. Jim Bob Collins is the fourth generation to work on his family's ranch, Table Mountain Cattle Company. We were primarily Hereford outfit forever. My grandmother said the Hereford cows were paying the bills for this long, we're gonna keep on doing it. So my dad just stuck with it and we went into it. I've been switching over to more of a black Angus and now I'm actually changing my gears again, I'm going to red Angus. And we're gonna do an F1 cross with the Hereford uh, bloodlines involved and just have that nice red bolly face. One of the reasons Table Mountain Cattle Company has been around so long is their belief that properly managing the operation's natural resources, like the soil and water, leads to success in the cattle business. My great uncle Jim was really passionate about good grasses, and he taught my dad, dad would always talk about him when he talked about how to run cattle and how to, how to, how to take care of the ground. And uh, great uncle Jim would always preach, uh, do you take care of the grass, the grass will take care of you. So you need to protect your ground and you're gonna work with that to help you stay viable as a family for generations. I mean, I would not be here if it wasn't for, for good conservation starting in the 1900s. For years, the Collins family has worked with the USDA's Natural Resources Conservation Service to protect and preserve their natural resources. NRCS provides financial and technical assistance to farmers, ranchers, and other private landowners who want to make improvements to their land and resources. I came to the Condon Field Office, and Jim Bob's family had had a long history of conservation, so they'd worked with NRCS uh, for quite some time. First and foremost, he's willing to try about anything, which is great, um, as long as it makes sense. Uh, you know, he's open to conservation that um, helps the bottom line and also helps his land. One of the early steps the Collins family took was creating a conservation plan with NRCS. The agency analyzed and evaluated the ranch and offered advice on some long-term conservation practices that could help improve the operation and its natural resources. That all starts with a conservation plan, you know, with putting all those ideas and coalescing them into a plan that we go out and we understand what the resource concerns are that Jim Bob is facing, not only by talking to him, but also, you know, looking at ourselves and taking the inventory of the property. And then coming up with some solutions and planning them out, you know, not just one year, two years, five years. We're looking 10 years down the road. We're not in this business to do it for a year. We're in this business to do it for a lifetime. If you look at a larger scale, there are gonna be trickle down effects for tens of years. We could be getting into some stuff that's gonna be beneficial for you for a hundred years when we get some of these bigger projects. One important project Jim Bob worked on with his local NRCS team was cleaning and repairing the stream that runs through his property. We're on the upper end of what is called Mountain Creek. The water from this way north, it's all gonna run down into the John Day River and that'll go into the Columbia from there. The creek at one point had been kicked over along the base of the hill back behind us. 
And that took it away from running through the gravel bars that live naturally in the bottom of the valley. And it also took it away from a lot of curvature that the steelhead and the salmon need to help slow that water down, to help the, the finer gravels to get to positive for, for what they need for spawning. And we took out any patches issues like small culverts and replaced them with bridges and we helped to build this out. And we fenced them off so those plantings would, 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 heal, would, would be protected from the cattle from grazing. It was about five or six years we broke this project up over and it was a lot of work and it has had a ton of benefit because we were able to recreate floodplains, and by doing that, we were able to redeposit some of the some of those soils back on the meadow to fill in the low spots, so it would irrigate more efficiently. In addition, water development has allowed for better distribution of livestock within the pastures. NRCS helped Jim Bob place stock tanks in strategic locations that would draw the cattle away from sensitive riparian areas. I know um, on Jim Bob's place, he's done a lot of these uh, spring developments um, and then also these troughs that you can kind of see behind me where um, they put these troughs in that are funded by the NRCS and um, it basically for water development to keep animals off the creeks um, and try to utilize more grass that are up in areas that are harder to reach that animals aren't normally going to because there's no water to keep them up there. It's been great. I mean, that, that, uh, that by allowing that water to go to the top of the hill, it pulled those cows off of those riparian zones on the bottom and helped them scatter out and do so much better. Like that pasture looks much better now because those tops are getting grazed evenly uh, along with the bottoms. Jim Bob knows he wouldn't have accomplished as much on his operation without the help of NRCS, and he hopes other farmers and ranchers will turn to the agency for financial and technical assistance with their own conservation projects. Don't be afraid of these programs. They are not being required by you to do them. They're being offered as a benefit to you. A small project could turn into a big project, could turn into a lifetime of cooperative agreements and cooperative working together. We are a trusted partner that landowners can feel safe with, that we have their interests at our heart. They know that we are here for them. And whether that is to provide technical assistance with just a simple question that has a, you know, a little resource concern somebody has, all the way to financial assistance. Honestly, I haven't met really any, any people from NRCS that I disliked. They're all good people, and they're really trying. They understand that their job is to help make agriculture positive and to help keep it in a positive financially as well. Reporting from Oregon, I'm Matt Fleck for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. If you have conservation practices you'd like to put in place on your own operation, you should start by visiting with your local NRCS office about the technical and financial assistance they can provide. Go to their website, nrcs.usda.gov, to find an office near you. Still ahead, we'll introduce you to an award-winning operation in Wyoming that has made stewardship and conservation a top priority. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Out here, you know what needs to be done and you know what it means to those you're doing it for. But every sunrise brings something new with the weather, the soil, the markets, your machinery. You can't always predict what it will be. So it's good to know that Ram trucks are more than capable of helping you get it done right. Hi, I'm John Mulhagen with Molly Manufacturing, the builders of Silencer Squeeze Chutes. Today I'm going to show you some of the safety features that we have on silencers that maybe you're not familiar with. You remember how we used to take that pole and shove it in behind that animal, and if they kick at the wrong time, it's going to get you. Well, we've solved this problem with our hydraulic kick bars. If you'll notice, I'm hydraulically moving this, and this will stop those animals from kicking you so I can easily move in and still have great safety. One of the things we really like on silencer squeeze chutes is the safety that we receive from having hydraulic neck bars. And I can simply pull this lever right here 
and move this animal's head to its left. And this gives us a lot of control. It also gives us a good space for any kind of subcutaneous vaccinations that we may be giving the animal. And the nice thing, when you're finished right here, you don't have to put these tools away. You can simply open up your doors and let the animal out. As a veterinarian that has a practice where the clients are bringing their animals to us, you know, we owe it to them to provide quality equipment that's going to allow their cattle to run through smoothly and be safe for them as well as everybody that's working with them. The desire to leave the land better than they found it is a common trait among cattle producers and you certainly see that in action with the regional winners of the Environmental Stewardship Award. These honorees are dedicated to maintaining and improving their lands for future generations. Let's head to Region 5 and the winning operation from Wyoming. In Southeast Wyoming, Larry Kundle is right where he likes to be, on horseback, moving cows and calves to fresh grass on the Kundle Ranch. Larry grew up here, and he and his wife Ruthie worked this land together. The ranch had been existing in the Kundle family for 102 years now. Uh, we're the fourth generation, and love it here. For Larry, of course, this is his family ranch. This belonged to his grandparents, great-grandparents. So there's a lot of history here. And for me, I, I just love it. I love the ranching. I love the cattle. We have a cow-calf operation, also a bread heifer operation will AI this coming week about 150 head of heifers so some of those will be sold in the fall along with the steer calves we'll probably keep the heifers and do it all over again next year uh, the ranch is approximately 8,000 deeded acres and we lease another 12,000 acres from six neighbors and six government entities so we run on a little over 20,000 acres and ranching's what we do the Kundal Ranch adjoins the Glendo Reservoir, which now covers the original headquarters. Their land also includes a section of the Oregon Trail. And Larry has worked to gather and preserve that pioneer history. And with a lifetime of experience, he's become an expert at monitoring the range to always keep improving. I think grass likes to be grazed. The carbon cycle likes to be pumping that carbon in the soil. So I think it's our job to graze it, not too much, not too little. For example, this year, sweet clover is abundant. It's gonna be here for a short time and it's gonna be gone. We're trying to graze the sweet clover to leave just enough that it'll go to seed, take the top off and move on. I see as, as we get better range conditions, I see the fire conditions getting better too. Larry is very innovative, you know, he looks, uh, he's what I call a kind of a ground up type manager. He looks at all the building blocks of what makes agriculture successful and what makes plants grow and those kind of things and uh, once you start doing those kind of things you know that uh, from a bottom up uh, things are going to come out well and uh, he's going to have a good sustainable ranching operation. It's about the cattle always but it's really about the grass and the last few years we've realized it's really about the ground and what's in the ground. Uh, the biology that's under the soil is really more important to us than every, everything else if we're going to be successful. Raising grass to raise the cows that uh, nourishes a lot of people, we hope. To supplement their grass, the Kundals use center pivot irrigation to produce hay for winter feeding. In addition, they've added miles of cross fencing and solar powered water tanks to help strengthen their rotational grazing plan. Thanks to NRCS, we've got, I think, 18 different solar wells, solar pumps. Uh, where we don't have water access, we've got water lines We've got, well, it's over nine miles of water lines now, three separate water lines. Well, the one that we're putting in this week is the fourth uh, water line that we're putting in that, that will water at least two or three different pastures. Rotational grazing, cross fences, water lines, all of those things to enable us to keep our grass good, not overgraze. From a stewardship standpoint, um, the Kundals have done a really great job. Cattle are now grazing areas that they weren't able to access before due to distance to water. They're seeing a benefit there. It's also benefited the wildlife as well. They've developed water in this arid plains area 
But the antelope and the mule deer and the elk and even the neotropical birds, the grouse, they all benefit from that water development. They benefit from the crops that are grown from the alfalfa. So I, I think they're a, a stellar example of, of stewardship and sustainability. Whether installing living snow fences, using genetic selection to reduce the size of his cows to better fit his resources, or experimenting with biochar to get more carbon in the soil, Larry is continually looking for ways to do things better. And he's always willing to share his knowledge with others. You know, Larry's a, a great spokesman. Uh, he's talked and gives speeches. Uh, I know in Washington, D.C., I know uh, even in Guam, all over the Western United States, he's given presentations on, you know, good range management and, and wildlife habitat management. I'm on a research committee and I get to see a lot of really cutting edge, innovative things. It's just exciting to see new technology come along that works with mother nature and maybe is a benefit to everybody. With an eye for every detail, the management of Kundal Ranch has resulted in a sustainable family operation and Larry and Ruthie have built a legacy of exceptional care for their cattle and their land. Sustainability is really pretty natural. It means you leave the ground better than you found it, uh, you leave your community better than you found it, and you gotta make money doing it. If you don't make money, you're not sustainable. We want to leave a legacy here. We want this land to be better than when we got here, and we want whoever takes over to improve it even more. Just keep making it better. I guess, first of all, I'm proud that our family's still been here over 100 years. I think that's uh, something to be proud of. I am. We've still got cattle. We've got more cattle than we've ever run and the grass is looking better than it ever has. So I'm proud of that. Stewardship to me, I guess, is a lot like sustainability. It's taking care of what you've got and leaving it better than the way you found it, if possible. We're not done talking about the Environmental Stewardship Award Program. When we come back, we'll take a look at a winning operation from New Mexico. Stay with us. When we start to break down the economics of cattle production on pasture, uh, pasture is the cheapest source of energy that we have uh, for cattle production. Most estimates that you see from universities will say that uh, grazing an animal costs about 45 cents per head per day and that pales in comparison to the cost of, of stored feed for supporting that animal. So forages, they're the base of our operation. Uh, they're the key to our economic success. So any type of management that we implement that's going to improve that production, uh, whether that's weed control or fertility, uh, is going to help us save money uh, at the end of the season. So when you're looking for weed control options for your pastures, go to rangeandpasture.com and find your local Corteva Territory Manager for more answers. cattlemen and women care for their land and their animals. They do so because they're committed to leaving what they have better than they found it. Today, we're looking at a couple of regional winners of the Environmental Stewardship Award. Let's take you to New Mexico to see the Region 6 Award winner. In Northeast New Mexico, Ute Creek Cattle Company has been in the same family for more than 200 years. Tata Libby Cruz is the seventh generation to ranch on this land. Jack and I uh, lived in Wyoming, Cheyenne, Wyoming for 37 years, had a wonderful life there. I knew we'd come back to the ranch eventually. My heart never left. And although I had a wonderful life, I was very excited about coming home. 
When Tata and Jack inherited the 14,000-acre ranch, it was suffering from overgrazing and neglect. So they decided to make some major changes. The first step was partnering with their Soil and Water Conservation District, as well as the Natural Resources Conservation Service, to clean up Ute Creek, which runs through their operation. And the first thing we did was fence off the riparian area for 10 miles through the ranch. That would preclude cattle from grazing. And the ground has just improved so dramatically. You can see it's sod covered. The shore is grass right up to the water. We're sub-irrigating this whole riparian area now, and it's, it's working beautifully. We started on the creek, sprayed salt cedar, fenced the creek out, started in the riparian area, so we kind of started from the bottom up, and Jack and Tutta had a vision from the beginning of where they wanted to be in the end. It's an uh, amazing transformation of what they've done to the place. And I think the creek is probably the cornerstone of all the work that we've done in the last 18 years. Um, it's our pride and joy. The fencing around the creek became the starting point for a new grazing system. Tutta and Jack installed 25 additional miles of fencing, which divided the original four large pastures into smaller, more manageable paddocks. We were able to run fences out from the riparian border fences to create our 23 new pastures. And so it really worked slick. It was uh, like a grand plan that came together. Uh, and they vary in size uh, from 300 acres to 2,000. We have a good overall plan, and then we adapt it as, as we need to kind of on the fly and what the land is telling us. Because you can really lay out a plan on the computer or have this big plan, which is good, but you need to be able to read the land and the environment and kind of watch and let it tell you what you need to do. We know that this adaptive grazing plan and this time managed grazing through this system creates the, the most productive regrowth. And so we use our cattle as a tool to uh, maximize forage production and to help control invasives because the more you graze and you graze it well, the, the fewer weeds come back. Jack and Tutta are very progressive whenever it comes to any type of innovative ideas, when it comes to beef cattle, as well as soil health. They're always right on top of any of the new innovations that come out. They're just real leaders and they're always willing to try something new too. They're, they're not afraid and they're willing to take that step and try. Since Ute Creek was no longer available as a water source, a new distribution system was installed to ensure cattle can have access to water anywhere on the ranch. We uh, determined the highest point on the ranch, which is on that hill over to the east, and we put two 10,000 gallon water storage tanks, and, and then that gravity flow allowed us to put in pipelines, probably 25 miles of pipeline, and uh, all two inch poly pipes so we could have plenty of recharge and then we, we take water all over the ranch from that point. It's a big deal having access to the water. I feel where the pears can come up and those calves can drink next to their mothers and get what they want and then go lay down and chew their cud or, or go back out and graze, whatever they want to do. Ute Creek Cattle Company also added shade balls in their tanks to help reduce water loss. The balls allow for rain to pass through while reducing evaporation. It's calculated that the balls will save 91% of water from evaporation. And um, on a 20-foot tank, that equates to over 16,000 gallons of water a year. Uh, pretty significant in this dry area. Thanks to their conservation efforts, wildlife on the ranch is thriving. And Tutta even set aside 23 acres of pasture to create her own wild bird sanctuary. Shortgrass prairie birds are imperiled. I mean, there's so much development going on, we're losing them at a very large rate. So having this just special allocated place for them to thrive and nest and breed and eat, and that's my pride and joy. Tutta and Jack are always thinking about their children and grandchildren and the future of Ute Creek Cattle Company. It's why they work hard to make a positive difference on the land. My wife is seventh generation on this land, seven generations. She wants it to be eight and nine and 10. We can tout how much we've done, but it, it's just a beginning. It's a forever kind of project. We do not inherit the land. We borrow it from our children. 
And so we have borrowed this land from Livy and Ted, and we've done the best that we could to leave it better than we found it. I have such a love of the land and such a commitment to uh, honoring the people who worked so hard to keep it in our family. And I feel a deep responsibility as well as a, a, a love for it. If you'd like to find out more about the Environmental Stewardship Award winners, see photos and videos, or even learn how to nominate someone for the award next year, visit the website environmentalstewardship.org. Still ahead, it's time for a visit with the one and only Baxter Black. Stay with us. It started with a man, a plot of land, and a few head of cattle. That man, your great-grandfather, You've got his name and his legacy, too. It's what you fight to live up to and work to leave behind. Mm -hmm. With innovation, integrity, and passion that runs as deep as yours, we'll be there for your operation, for your future, for you. This is why Merck Animal Health works. Did you know that Prefort makes over a thousand different farm, ranch, and rodeo items? And now, thanks to Prefort Direct, it's easier than ever before to get access to every item Prefort makes delivered direct to your local dealer. For more information about Prefort Direct, visit us at Prefort.com. Prefort, America's number one name in farm, ranch, and rodeo. Speaking about funny, Baxter Black has put together a six-hour, three-DVD collaboration of non-stop agro-humor. Baxter has been entertaining farmers and ranchers from Johnny Carson to Elko, Dolly Parton to Las Vegas, and Ark City to Martin, Tennessee. Treat yourself. It's like being there. Three DVDs for 25 bucks. Call 800-654-2550 or baxterblack.com. Did I say non-educational? If God intended cows to swim, he'd given them all flippers. You rarely see a mermaid calf or Holstein skinny differs. Now Randy wasn't brilliant, but he was a heavy breather, which helps when chasing wild cows who aren't that brilliant either. The cow in question spotted him, stuck her tail in the air, and went out for a tank dam in the pasture yonder there. Randy fell in hot pursuit while shaking a big loop out. He knew he had to catch her quick, or his horse and him would poop out. She hit the bank, took one big leap, and dove in like a porpoise. The last thing our two cowboys saw was a disappearing orphan. She swam out to the middle where her feet could still touch bottom, submerged there in the water, looking vaguely hippopotamus. We've got her now, cried Randy as he bailed off his horse and jumped into a rowboat that was tethered in the moss. He grabbed an oar and shoved away and started paddling wildly and rowed himself out towards the cow who watched him crocodile-play. He roped her off the starboard and half hitched her to the bowsprit, but she breached just like a marlin and covered him with he planned to tow her backwards, but her feet dug in the sea floor and pulled him clear across the pond and out up on the lee shore. The hull was flying all apart and headed for a shipwreck. The poop deck lived up to its name, or should that be cow chip deck? But he hung on there behind the cow despite the flying shrapnel. No doubt to go down with his ship like any good ship capital. Well, the cow put Randy up a tree up there in all his glory as she butted up against the trunk and marked her territory. Pretty scary, hollered Steve-O. I'm surprised he wasn't drowned Yep, that cow just plain out foxed me, muttered Randy, then expounded that I've learned myself a lesson, a basic rule refresher. That cow, the boat, and me can't hold our water under pressure. This is Baxter Black from down under, out there. Thanks, Baxter. Now, if you'd like to learn more about what's happening with NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, you can find us on Facebook. 
Be sure to like our page and we'll keep you updated with photos, details on upcoming shows, and much more. We're back with more right after this. Join the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. NCBA is the oldest cattle industry organization, working every day to defend your interests in Washington, D.C. And there are big benefits to being a member. You'll get news you can use in the National Cattlemen and policy updates from Beltway Beef. Plus big discounts from John Deere, Cabela's, and more great partners. Join now. Call 866-233-3872 or sign up online at ncba.org. When you're in the cattle business, no matter how much it's a business, it still starts with cattle. It's this basic notion that sits at the core of how we approach things at Beringer Engelheim. We understand when you put the cattle first, it just naturally leads to doing the right things. If you want to do well in this business, you start by doing right. Take care of the cattle, and they'll take care of you. Deep in the heart of Texas, that's where the Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show will be in 2020. It's the biggest convention just for cattle producers. In San Antonio, a city with an amazing history that's packed with great food and fun. You can't miss it. So make plans now for the 2020 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show in San Antonio, February 5th to the 7th. Find out more at ncba.org. has long been a supporter of voluntary branded beef labeling programs. Brian Baxter has more on how the Kentucky Cattlemen's Association developed a branded ground beef product that increases the value of cold cows for its members. When Kroger was looking for a locally raised and sourced ground beef product to carry in their Kentucky grocery stores, they turned to the Kentucky Cattlemen's Association for help. Essentially, Kentucky Cattlemen's Ground Beef was created to be another market opportunity for marketing cull cows in the state of Kentucky. We saw an opportunity with Kroger as they came to us wanting a ground beef product that was completely Kentucky and truly Kentucky proud. They didn't really understand how to go about it or had the time and capability, so they came to our office and we got to work right away, established Beef Solutions as a company, and thus created Kentucky Cattlemen's Ground Beef. What we're doing is buying the cows from producers in Kentucky. It starts here and ends here. So we buy them in Kentucky, they're harvested in Kentucky, and then they're sold back to the consumers in Kentucky. We know where they've come from, and the consumer can be very confident in what product they're getting. It's an opportunity for us to add value to our farmer's income. We are a cow-calf state. Most of our calves get on the truck and they go west. What's left is a cow. We take that cow and that's what we use for our product. So we got a small batch, whole animal product. It's been very, very well received. In order for Kentucky producers to sell their cull cows into the Beef Solutions Program for processing, they're required to adhere to the gold standard of care requirements that were created to verify the cattle and to provide consumers with the information they want. So part of the Beef Solutions Program is uh, what we call the gold standard of care. And that's part um, that the producer agrees to whenever we're doing the enrollment forms. So part of it is the beef quality assurance protocols that everything, all the, the shots and everything are given correctly, the cattle are treated humanely and have access to water and all those things. And all the cattle have to be verified as a local Kentucky product. So we verify using the producer's records that those cattle have been on a farm for a minimum of 60 days. So that gives us a traceability component that we know the consumer is looking for. Another unique aspect of the Kentucky Cattlemen's ground beef product is the label. One of the hardest pieces to this whole puzzle that I don't think any of us were really prepared for was labeling. So you want to make sure that you're standing out in a meat case because the beef section of a meat case is ever expanding. So we found through consumer research that the black and the gold really resonated with consumers and customers and they would gravitate towards that. On the back of the package, we really wanted to focus in on the nutritional information. Beef oftentimes gets lost within that nutritional conversation, so we wanted to take a different twist on it and put the cooked values as well as the raw values. Traditionally, you see just the raw values, but there's a whole other story to be had once you've cooked a product. The program has not only added profit opportunities for Kentucky cattle farmers, 
but created a product both consumers and producers can be proud of. So since we started production of Kentucky Cattlemen's Ground Beef in March of 2018, we have packaged over 465,000 pounds of ground beef within that time frame that has ultimately impacted over 100 farms here in the state of Kentucky in 41 different counties and really has resulted in over $810,000 in farm gate sales, which is money that we've paid producers for the purchase of their cows for the program. The value is huge, so we modeled that program around cull cattle for a reason. Uh, there, there was not a strong market for cull cattle in Kentucky, so we wanted to be able to capitalize on that lack of a market and give those producers some incentive to, to put those cull cows through our program. So the biggest benefit is we pay the producers based on the hot carcass weight of that animal. There's a lot of value for a producer there. They can take them and put them through this program and then also, you know, help create that sustainable beef and that local product that consumers are looking for and they can be part of that local food chain. It's been such a great blessing to have this truly Kentucky product in the shelves. Granted, we're not the first Kentucky product to be in a retail setting and I'm sure we won't be the last, especially when it comes to the ground beef sector. But really what it's meant is people can get excited about going to the grocery store, picking up that product and really holding something that their neighbors down the road probably put some thought and care into. And I think having a product like this in the grocery store for them to latch onto and get reinvigorated and rally around agriculture has been a wonderful opportunity for them and they get excited about it. From the Bluegrass State, I'm Brian Baxter reporting for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. We're wrapping up this week's show with legacy photos. These are great shots submitted by our viewers of daily life on their farm or ranch. Let's take a look. Want to see your photo on Cattlemen and Cattlemen? Message them to us on the Cattlemen and Cattlemen Facebook page or email them to c2c at beef.org. Don't forget, registration is now open for the 2020 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show in San Antonio. The convention is set for February 5th through the 7th. You can register and get your housing all set up on the website ncba.org. Well, that wraps up this edition of NCBA's Cattle and Cattle. Thanks so much for spending time with us. We'll see you again next week right here on RMD 